Keep on learning, keep on learning, keep on learning. When your L drops, you start earning. Hello, hello, good afternoon, good day, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, this is the Immigrant Experience Show coming to you once again. My name is Moji Taiwo, the host of the Thai Show, and I'm also the author of a book called I Give Because I'm Blessed, I'm Blessed Because I Give, a Chronicle of an Immigrant's Journey. Don't forget to share, to like, and to watch previous episodes. Um, but on today's show, we have the pleasure of meeting and hearing the immigrant journey of Mr. Oluwa Shegun Eric Gilbert, commonly known as Eric. Eric is the CEO of Perfect Touch Saloon, a specialty barbering studio and is also a gifted music minister and songwriter who has released a number of videos available on downloads and the latest titled The Tent of Meeting. Right? The Tent of Meeting. Eric is a family man with a beautiful wife and three adorable children. But before we get into his story, I would like to share a little tidbit about Canada with you. According to LinkedIn's latest workforce report, Calgary, Alberta leads the way in North America and especially among Canadian talents in technology. Post-secondary institutions such as the University of Calgary, University of Alberta, and SAGE, the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology, ranks the top schools for tech talents in Canada. So now we're going to go back to our special guest, Mr. Eric Gilbert. Welcome to this show. And we thank you very much for uh, honoring our invitation. We would like to start the show by asking you where you came from. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for having me on this show. And I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm from Nigeria, uh, born and bred in Nigeria, born and raised in Nigeria. And I, I migrated from uh, Nigeria to South Africa. When was that? That was in 2005. 2005, you left Nigeria for South Africa? For South Africa. Okay. And I lived in South Africa for 10 years. Okay. And it was great. Beautiful country, mm -hmm. you know, nice place to be, no doubt. And also popular yes. in South Africa, did some some uh, movies. Okay. Uh, oh, so you so your talent goes beyond uh, where we are sitting today, and what we know so far as far as your recordings. But you also um, you you venture into the arts in films and theater and so on. Correct. Okay. Correct. So I did a KFC a breakfast run in South Africa. I did a movie called uh, Room 9 in South Africa. I did a Kit Kat advert and some other stuff that I can even recollect right now. Okay. And those are the major ones mm -hmm. that I can, rem I can remember. And then I also have my business established on uh, 108 Fox Street. Oh, you still remember that? I remember, just yeah. the back of Gandhi Square. Okay. It's the tallest building in Gandhi Square. Which city is that in South Africa? In Johannesburg. In Johannesburg. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So why did you decide to leave all of that venture and uh, come to Canada? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I've... I don't, I don't want to talk about any other stuff uh, from my journey, mm -hmm. you know, with God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I left Nigeria because I had a word that says, I'm going to take you to a place that is, you know, flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. I have no clue where that was. And I, I traveled to South Africa. I thought 
it was South Africa. Okay. And then things were jolly and everything was going on very well. I got married in South Africa. My wife, though, she's from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And I have my first and second uh, child in South Africa. Okay. So my kids were born. So, so you and your wife met in South Africa? No, we met in Nigeria first. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. So, but I got married in South Africa. That was 2008. Mm -hmm. I left 2005. Mm -hmm. So 2008, I went back home for my wedding. Mm -hmm. And then immediately after our wedding, my wife came back with, with you to mm -hmm. South Africa. Mm -hmm. And we settled down there. Things were good. And then at one point, I tend to like, oh, what is going on? Then I heard a voice saying, you're building a cathedral mm -hmm. right here. This is not where I want you. Okay. And at that point... So, so most people will say they have an inkling that that was not your des permanent destination. Something you were like supposed to be moving on somewhere. On somewhere. Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. So, and I was like, I, I have no clue. I, I don't have anybody in Canada. I don't mm -hmm. know anyone in Canada. How do I get to Canada? I have no idea. Okay. But... Uh, my wife came up one day too and she said, I'm just tired here. And I was like, this is now, you know, everything is now. Coming closing, together, yeah. Coming together. Then mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I know you, I mean, you have sisters in UK and all of that. I have many friends in UK too. Do we go to UK? And then she said, oh, no, I don't want to go to UK. Like, and I was like, well, where do you want to go? I brought you from Nigeria. You left all, everything for me to come to South, South Africa, Africa. so it's yeah, it's your turn now. So, mm -hmm. tell me where do you want to go? Okay, so then she said, Uh, maybe we should try Canada. And I was like, Oh, really? It's cold. <laughs> That's all I know about Canada. That it's cold, it's yeah, cold. yeah, like, it's cold, but well, I don't mind the cold. Mm -hmm. And then she said, Oh, yeah, I was doing it one time when I stopped. I was like, What are you doing? He said, Oh, they have this program called you know, the federal skills, whatever. I said, okay. okay. And she said, maybe we should look into that as an investment. Okay. Then I said, okay. Then we started putting all our documents together and all that. And then the part that shocked me, that really shocked me, was <laughs> we put all the documents together. People started telling us, like, Oh, sometimes it takes five years, sometimes they don't answer you. But our case was different. The whole thing went less than six months. Oh, really? And you applied as a, a skilled, lab, la, skilled yeah. labor, or is it skilled business? There's so many different so ways. So came in with a federal skill. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she was the main applicant. Okay, okay. And, yeah, All right. So I followed... Is it and yes, and yes. So it all thing went like less than six six months, and I was like, I think this is this is something. where you're being directed. So that is one. Okay. Then the other part is this. So where in Chicago? Okay. Okay. It gets one. Go. okay. So I'm looking at myself like, okay, uh, I don't want to go to Toronto. Like she said, why? I said, because I'm coming from Nigeria. I mean, already the population is more. Okay, I okay. Got down to a population of 40 million, mm -hmm. which is South Africa. And then and you, South okay, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm coming to Canada. That time was like 35 million. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, okay, let's go to Canada. So then she said, okay, so where do you want to go? I said, I have no idea. So how did you choose? Good question. <laughs> did you did you did you land in Calgary directly or did you go somewhere else first? So we went online. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. We went online <laughs> to say where is the best place to raise family. Okay. Okay. So fine, Toronto popped up. And the answer for Toronto is no, I don't want to go there because it's too many people. Mm -hmm. And second was Vancouver. And then Calgary shows up. So when I saw the name,
Calvary. I said, I like that name. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you chose where to... <laughs> I, I bet you didn't know that it was uh, very snowy and very cold. I have no clue. Mm -hmm. so I was like, I like that place. And my wife said, yeah, yeah, I like the place too. So we started doing our investigation about Calgary and all of that. So we checked and then the whole thing keep pointing to like go to Calgary, go, go to Calgary. So I said to my wife, I said, this is how we're going to know. If my church don't have a community there mm -hmm. in Calgary, they probably will go to Toronto. Because mm -hmm. they have one in Toronto. Okay. okay. So, only to find out like we have a community already established in Calgary. In Calgary. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm mm -hmm. not saying anything. Mm -hmm. So, I follow you. Yeah. So, so, when did you arrive in Calgary? Uh, we landed um, 28th of March 2015. 2015, and we're in 2022 now. So you've only been here for seven years, Correct. and you've done such a wonderful job. So um, you've been here only seven years. I just want to refresh some of our viewers' uh, memories. In previous uh, episodes that we've done, we did talk about the different ways that immigrants arrive in Canada. Some come as refugees, some come as uh, professionals, some as students, and of course, some as skilled workers. And some come through investment mm -hmm. in the country. So you came as skilled you know, labor or skilled professional through your wife, but you are a businessman in Calgary now. Tell us how you, you know, venture into this studio where we are today. Uh, <laughs> well, when we came, uh, left to my wife, she wanted me to pick up another profession, which is, I was looking at going into oil and gas. Okay. And, you know, like when you came into... Will, will enter into Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, you have some counselor who they will counsel you. Yeah. Uh, then I went through one of those. Okay. And I could remember there was a guy. I can't remember his name, but if the guy is watching, mm -hmm. he will say, "Oh, I know that guy." Okay. So he looked at me, he saw my resume, and he looked at me and he says, "You've been doing, you've been in beauty industry for all your life." Mm -hmm. I said, "Yes, sir." He said, so why do you want to change suddenly and go into oil and gas? And he said, the only advice I can give you right now mm -hmm. is like, it's not a good place to go right now. Like, why don't you stick to what you're doing? Because your fee is more. Like, if I have my way, I would be under you for you to train me because I'm looking at your resume in front of me and I was like, man. That person is God sent. Agreed. <laughs> because, of course, naturally, uh, when immigrants come, especially immigrants from Nigeria or, uh, you know, East Africa. Africa, you know, we tend to go into oil and gas. And there is a need there, and Abata is well known for oil and gas. But what people don't know is that we can actually commercialize and make a living out of what we are passionate about. And that's what this person saw in you. Absolutely. I, would, I wouldn't mind going back one day if I know where this guy is just to say thank you. Mm. Yeah, so right now I'm an educator. I also teach. Okay. Like in a school, like educate. You know, about? About. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, about barbering, about, about, about uh, beauty, styling, yeah, and beauty, styling, yeah, and things like that. Things. So like that. So that actually, you know, you've already jumped into my next question is, um, the, the show, the Immigrant Experience show, is to highlight and showcase the journey of different immigrants into Canada, but also to highlight their achievement and how they give back to the community. So you already moved me into how you give back to the community. So not only did you meet this person who steered you in what, you know, 
it's obviously the right direction, but within that short period of time, you are already giving back by teaching. Which schools are you teaching at? Um, there's a school right here in Chinook uh, called uh, TOC. TOC, okay. So, mm -hmm. TOC Academy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the owner of the school, yeah, her name is Mai. And how did I? We met. I was going to write my exam to mm -hmm. get my license. Okay. You know, because. You know, in Canada, you know, everything is certified and certification. So yes, I I was looking around to see where can I go just to brush up myself mm -hmm. because the education back home, like in South Africa or in Nigeria, is different. Is different, yes. And yeah. So uh, I found this lady, so I went to see her. Apparently, she knew me before even arriving at in, in uh, okay, her, and then she was like, oh, no, 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 no. You are too much for me. Like, I, I can't train you. I can't teach you. I said, you know what? Let's trash everything that I know from the past. Mm -hmm. I'll behave as if I know nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to... To refresh, yeah. Get my license. Mm -hmm. And then she looked at me and said, I can't believe like someone like you can say that because I followed you on Instagram. Okay. And I can see your work. Like, mm -hmm. that. So that was how we connected. And then she and her husband run the same this, this, this the school, mm -hmm. and, then and the the school is called T O C C yeah. Academy. Academy, mm -hmm. just right there by Shinok. Okay. And when I was in the school, and she said something to me, said, "I would like when you get your license mm -hmm. to be part of us and help to." I said, "Why not?" That's okay, that's your desire. I want mm -hmm. to give back. Mm -hmm. you know, I just want to educate people, I want to tell people, like, you know, life is not all about, you know, somebody have to do the work. Mm -hmm. Somebody have to be a hair stylist, somebody mm -hmm. have to be an IT mm -hmm. guru, somebody have to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. There is a role for anybody and everybody yeah. to play in society. The sky, the sky is too big, like the birds fly, they don't, they don't crash. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, you focus on the part that you feel like, you know, your your education or God is leading you mm -hmm. and follow it. Mm -hmm. Like I remember my dad, he said something very strong when I was growing up. He said, anything you find your hand doing, he said, go to the stream. And do it very well. Do it very well. With mm -hmm. your heart. Mm -hmm. So I tried to jump into some other boats and all that, and it's not working. Mm -hmm. You know, and my dad actually taught me how to cut it. Oh, really? Good. He would cut my hair back home and put me behind his leg, mm -hmm. between his leg, mm -hmm. and then he would use scissors and cut, cut my hair just like that. So I became fascinated with that. Mm -hmm. like, How did he do that? So I started cutting my friends here in school, and I graduated from school, and a guy saw me cutting somebody in front of my house, and he says, why don't you consider this as a career? And the rest, and the the rest is, is, is history. history. So tell, tell, tell me and our, our viewers that uh, what does it take? You know, how's business? How is your salon doing? It is doing great. It's doing very, very good. Let me take you back a little bit. When okay. did you open? Uh, I opened this location 2019. Okay, you said you opened this location 2019. Is there another location? Uh, no, when I started, I started as a, I was renting a chair, you know. Okay, okay. With, with someone. That with was someone. The name Perfect Touch came into came to, me. Okay. And then when I came to Canada, if I remember, I really don't want to do it. And the first guy that I work with, uh, I actually told him, I gave him, I commit myself to him. I said, look, I've been doing this all my life and I just want to enjoy myself. I don't mind helping you out. You know, I became a manager in the salon. In the salon. And okay. I helped him. The business was mm -hmm. extremely, you know, well done and everything was going on well. And suddenly something came along the line we went. You know, then 
Well, uh, so, so, so in essence, you went your separate ways, mm -hmm. but while that was ending, this was opening up. This was beginning. Yeah, this, I don't even have plan for this either too. I was just like, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to do it? But all roads keep leading me to like, you have no idea what I brought you to Canada to come and do. So... Okay, I have to say something here. In my book, there is a passage there where I talk about when things are ending, it's actually not ending for you. It's just mean that that chapter is ending. And then it's giving you an opportunity to begin another chapter. I, I would take that. Yes. I will re actually read that. <laughs> yes. So, so get a copy of I Give Because I'm Blessed. Uh, I'm blessed because <laughs> I give. And everything in it is inspirational and it's leading to exactly the story that you are telling mm. uh, today. Yeah. Mm. So, is there any plans for another location? Oh, yeah. Strong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If not for COVID, Probably we'll be having maybe two more. By now. Yeah. And it shall be. Amen. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, what also uh, is surprising to me, because I always share how I meet people. This is our very first time of meeting in person. Yeah. But apparently, as I found out that you have actually known my family members since, almost since you came to Canada. Seven years ago. Yeah. So, do you want to share a little bit about that? All right. Okay. Apparently, your your son, DJ Taiwo, happens uh, to be a client of one of my colleagues, and he comes to the shop. Very, very jovial, friendly guy. And I looked at this guy, and I looked at his name anytime he book. My like DJ Taiwo, and he's. He probably can't even speak Yoruba, you know. <laughs> he can't, but he can understand. Yeah. So I looked, I said, uh, you, you're from Nigeria because your name, like, I can trace that name and tell where you're from. And he said, oh, how did you know? I said, no, I saw your name, DJ. I mean, like, mm -hmm. sometimes they call him DJ. DJ, you know, yeah, DJ. DJ mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, he goes by DJ. So mm -hmm. I saw the full name, DJ. Mm -hmm. And I saw Tyro. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah. Oh, Okay, I know that tribe. I know where you're from. You know, Yoruba and mm -hmm. this and all that. So we became friends from there, and then I don't interfere in other people's, you know. And then also, Nomso came in, and then he became my own client directly. And then before I started having kids and all that, you know, I was cutting his hair. And then only to find out this year that. <laughs> Namso is related to Deji, Deji and Deji's uh, son, and Namso is married to your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and you also cut my grandson's hair. Uh, yeah, yeah, and Ezra and, Ez uh, and Amos. Amos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think earlier on, the third grandson was coming to you too, yeah. because you know. <laughs> I've, I haven't met you until today, but I've heard so much about you because I've always complimented the kids mm. on their haircut. And the last time, no, not second to the last time that Deji came here, mm. he came to visit with me and I was complimenting him mm. on how he got rid of his uh, COVID hairstyle. That's how he started talking about you, and I said, I must meet this guy. Okay. Yes, yes. It's so glad. To, uh, we are very happy and glad to, to meet you, and the, the kids speak very highly of your service and your skills. So uh, we're happy that you're doing very well, and we're happy that you're able to join us on the Immigrant Experience Show. So is there any one line or two that you would like to um, share with our audience to motivate the new people or people who have been here that are immigrants? Okay. So, <clears throat> people who have been here, I would like to say to you that whatever you find your own doing, keep on doing it. There is a phrase that I always use when I'm teaching the kids in school. I say, keep on learning, 
keep on learning, keep on learning. When your L drops, you start earning. So I will want to say that to you. You know, keep on learning, learning, keep on learning, keep on learning. When your, your L drops, drops, you start you earning. Okay. <laughs> All right. That is good. That's very good. So uh, that is a wrap for us on this uh, episode of the Immigrant Experience Show. We're very happy to have interviewed Mr. Eric Gilbert of Perfect Touch Salon in Calgary, Alberta. So if you're looking for a skillful, artful barber, this is where you come. My name is Moji Taiwo, your host of the Immigrant Experience Show. Don't forget to like us, to share, and to subscribe. And if you go to our Diversity TV channel, you can also become a member. Register with us and become a member. We also take, take this opportunity to thank all of our supporters so far and welcome future supporters. Until next time, we say goodbye.